Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss with the halfway mark having been crossed in the number of polls that have been already held in the seven phase elections in India. What is it that we are seeing? And uh, of course the bulk of the, shall we say, the strong BJP base, a large part of it is still yet to vote, which is Bihar, UP and certain other states. Seema, what is the general sense after this four rounds of polls as opposed to the total number of uh, seven. Do you think that you're seeing any trend or it's still very difficult to map? Well, you know, there are two things that are happening. One is, of course, what you're getting now is a flood of unsourced assessments on the social media uh, with slugs, like if I'm sending it to you, I say it's come from the IB, somebody else says it's come a BJP internal assessment, somebody says Congress, and that, those are going all over the place. So there's obviously some kind of disinformation that is happening because none are really matching. Uh, some are giving a huge number to the NDA, others are giving nothing. So, you know, but if you go by ground reports in these four uh, phases, there doesn't seem to have been any kind of a wave. So it is not a Narendra Modi wave, but it's not an anti-Narendra Modi wave as well. So you have had real contests. I mean, that's what when the reporters went in, what happens in the last 24 hours, we can't always say. But it is like there is on issues, you know, like in Aurangabad, people said that they're only going to vote for drinking water. Um, you know, uh, the farmers' issues and the farmers' belt, they are talking about uh, the problems that they've been facing. Now, to what extent that's going to become the final verdict? Because I think we were just discussing that even in demonetization, we thought it would have a major impact. And then when the results came out, at the end of the day, the people didn't seem to have voted for it. Or they were angry it. about it, but they still gave the vote saying ki it must, if it has caused so much problem, must have some benefit, which we'll see in the long run. That yeah, seems to yeah, be that Yeah, and the other, I think the campaign. main thing is there's no BJP. It's all Narendra Modi. So he's already converted it into a presidential form of government, but the party is somewhere at the back. He could have, I mean, the whole uh, thing is they've dropped so many of the sitting MPs. They have also got rid of the old guard. So it's a new... BJP, which is subservient and which is behind Narendra Modi. And Narendra Modi is the guy who goes on the stage, he speaks alone. So it's a vote for Narendra Modi, not for the BJP, not for the local MP. And even the BJP organization has become more and more Amit Shah oh, yeah. in physical terms. Absolutely. Okay, you know, that brings up the next question. These are the two who have also made a huge number of statements which the opposition have complained about to the election commission. The Election Commission, now it appears there was at least a division in the Election Commission, but the Election Commission has been, appears to be supine. For a long time, they did not address it till the Supreme Court said, why aren't it, we are going to hear about this petition. Earlier, Supreme Court said you had powers with the Election Commission, said we really have no powers, you know, we are just uh, a yeah. body who is doing nice, but there's really not much we can do and we are a toothless body according to the election commission itself. But after having accepted they had powers, after having been wrapped on the knuckles, on vis-a-vis -vis Modi and Amit Shah, they have been significantly soft, while on the others at least they have shown some, uh, shall we say, yeah. Uh, yeah. some attempt to uh, take action. I think the casualty, one of the biggest casualty of this 2019 Lok Sabha polls has been the credibility of the Election Commission. And that is tragic. I mean, in a democracy, regardless of what has happened in the past years, with all the allegations of malfunctioning, booth capturing, EVMs, etc., the Election Commission has always been seen as a body where you felt that that's a sort of court of justice where the ballot is concerned. That's gone. That seems to have gone. Everybody is so hassled about it. Everybody is so worried about it. Uh, you have the election commissioner, the chief election commissioner, or the chief collect, uh, election commissioner of India not taking a position on issues, even so moto. It's always, you know, somebody dragging their attention to it and them spending several days and then coming out with some kind of, like you said, supine ruling, which is so biased. 
And now you, we don't know. You're actually writing a new code of ethics, you know, where you can say so many things. And you can use military issues or you can hint, even if you don't use the word, uh, the actual term of a community, but you can say everything else about that community. And you have the Election Commission watching and not taking action. You know, of course, this was also the what the courts did, for instance, in the famous Bal Thakre case, mm. if you remember, that this, how much of the electoral rules and what could be called, considered corrupt practices, that, that has been stretched for a long time. Mm. So we are seeing the culmination of the process and the diselection commission, mm. which under the presidential election that are taking place, as you are saying right now, mm. the form has become more and more presidential. If we don't control Modi, others really don't matter. Yeah. Absolutely. And the point is that now you we uh, we're now hearing in the papers that there has been a division, like you said, in the election commission, and there is this one person who might have uh, said no. But then what are those arguments? What is the division about? Also brings up later on, not today, but the later on, how should the election commission itself be inducted in? Because unlike the judiciary, which is the body which has some rule, rules, shall we say, a, procedure, a collegium of people who decide. Then you have the CVC, the Lokna, Lokpal, all of them have now yes. procedures. Yes. Here there is really the government selection, that's all that is there. Yes. And that and allows it's for this such distortion. an important body. I mean, you know, now people are writing reports or blogs or Facebook posts or social media posts suggesting that the ele election commission is in collusion with whatever. But that's not a good thing to happen. It and it's not, it destroys your fundamental faith. I mean, we had one thing, which was the five yearly or yeah. even our state elections where there was this something, a credibility which the world came to observe. And also the Indian electorate and the Indian people have Had both faith. asserted their identity through the elections. They have always given verdicts which you could respect even if you didn't agree. Uh, but that process, whether the verdict is real and just, itself comes into question. This would be a very sad day for democracy. But getting out of that mode, because that's yeah. really something we have to take up also after the elections. Uh, looking at the election mapping itself, as, uh, as we were talking about earlier, what are the, sta the two states, which is what could be called the Hindi heartland, UP and Bihar, put together they have 120. very 120 odd seats in the parliament, which is in that sense the largest number of seats which has gone to BJP and forms a core, if with problem with Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Charkhand, and Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan. These are the states which really contrib have contributed to almost 90% of the BJP seats. In this Bihar, how do you see Bihar? See, this is what is so interesting. You have UP Gadbandan and you have a Bihar Gadbandan of the opposition. You have unexpectedly maybe the UP Gadbandan doing very well because it sort of works out, the stats work out, the fact that the two have established a certain very harmonious kind of functioning, Akhilesh Yadav and uh, Mayawati and of course Ajit Singh as well. Uh, and a certain kind of chemistry that has developed between the three leaders. So that's very evident. And just sheer stats brings it together. So a combination of stats, numbers, which matter, of course, and, and also the organizations. Absolutely. Both seem to have organizations on the ground and Ajit Singh's uh, party. They have solid organizations on the ground. They have a good leadership. They have a credible leadership. Mulam Singh moved and, you know, earlier it was whether Akhilesh Yadav is going to be acceptable or not. He's totally in charge of the Samajwadi thing. He's kept his father also alongside. So, you know, it's a far holistic and a whole Samajwadi that is contesting the election this time as compared to last time. Mulam is a discordant note still, but a much less important much one. Much less, except for that one statement. Now he sort of was there with Mayawati. You know, he had a public meeting with Mayawati, which is in itself a major indication of how things are going. So there it seems to be working for them. And last time the BJP got 72 seats. So there's no way 
even by sheer numbers of just plain stats, it's not going to get that. It's coming down. The problem is a little bit with the Gadbandan in uh, Bihar, though they've got Manji this time and they've got the um, this um, uh, up, uh, Kushwaha also there. Uh, small outfits. Um, I think the absence of Lalu Yadav is being felt. And as, as a you campaigner. Said, as, as you also said, there is also the arithmetic which is not as favorable as the arithmetic in UP was. Yeah. That the Gadbandan put together yeah. does not have the number of votes the Gadbandan put together has in UP. It's interesting. Uh, last election uh, in UP, you had the impact of Muzaffarnagar and communalization actually impacting on the voter. Now it seems that because UP sort of became the laboratory with Yogi Adityanath of communalism, in which the marginalized were all feeling the pressure, suddenly the caste identity of the people and the communities has become more important and people seem to be voting more on caste lines. Even in Bihar? In, uh, no, this is UP. UP, but UP. if it comes now, to in, Bihar. If you go back to Bihar, in the last election, you had the caste playing a role and keeping the vote non-communal. But this time, we are not really sure how it's worked out. If we look at what the ground reports seem to be, the communalization has gone deeper in Bihar this yes. time and than without the without the encounter deaths, without that level of lynchings, so they have started. And why the communalization, I feel, is more is because now Nitish Kumar is slipping. And whatever reports we are hearing, it could be wrong, but these are not totally verified. Um, but the ground reports from journalists that the BJP is increasing at the expense of Nitish Kumar. You know, that was also the other part of Bihar, and as distinct from UP, where the left, then that includes the socialists, the CPI, the liberation, the CPIM, all of it put together, had a much bigger presence in Bihar for longer than it had in UP. UP did have that presence 50s, 60s, but it had really slipped down quite a bit. And the socialists then went into uh, yeah. no, identity politics of certain kinds, yeah. Yadav and so on. But in Bihar, that, that was a, shall we say, a block to communalization. Mm -hmm. This time it does appear that Bihar has been more communalized and partly Nitish, as you said, losing yeah. ground. Yeah. Because Nitish was seen as a figure who also had support amongst all communities. And yeah, that's so now we are based. looking really, there is a slide anyway. The BJP is not going to, and uh, you know, they're not going to get the same kind of seats. Oh yes, NDA. Nitish and uh, so there is BJP going to put be together a was drop, about 37 But seats. whether the drop is going to be as much as expected earlier, one is not sure. RJD is claiming it will be, but you know, we'll have to wait for the ground. And reports. what you and said, the Lalu not being yeah. there, Tejashvi and others have does do not have the charisma. He doesn't that have it. He's just about held the party together. He's a good guy. He's not such a you know novice as uh, some might say. But at the same time, without that whole flair and that authority and the campaigning style, if you know you're not hearing that from Bihar anymore. We heard that last election coming from Lalu. And we thought that Lalu being put in jail, there would also be a sympathy factor. We have to see how much that plays out. Yeah, I think the Yadav vote is still where it is. It's still with the, uh, RJD. It hasn't really shifted. But uh, Lalu had the, had the impact of further consolidating, not just the backwards, but I mean the Yadavs, but the other backwards as well. So now we'll have to see how it has worked out. And do you think Kanhaya and Begusarai is going to make a difference? Make a difference? He should win. He should. I mean, he should win. He should win because uh, I think he's got a lot of things going. For, I mean, apart from the national, we all know what the national campaign is and um, what kind of good politics he represents. And the fact that he is, um, you know, in his election is, is really embodies the resistance to communalism, to authoritarianism, to the kind of politics we have been experiencing over the last five years. Having said that, it's a real fight, you know, because that kind of charisma is there in Delhi and with others, but it wasn't there in Beku Sarai. So he had to fight a hard fight. But every week 
the campaign went up picked and up. Th picked up. And, you know, it reached new levels every week because he got the support he needed. He got the right kind of people who needed to go and speak to the Muslim community, which is a big vote bank there. He got the right kind of support for the Dalits in the Pasman vote where Jignesh and others helped. And the Bhumiyad has a certain left presence in that vote. CPI and he himself is, CPI has that uh, presence. So, I mean, the later reports were that he should be winning. And also he seemed to have cut across caste community lines because for the youth. Because his campaign, you know. For what the youth. Was, yes. The youth seemed to have yes. identified themselves with yes. him much and, more. No, and what is very good is that he never brought the campaign down from the issues that really matter. He never became, you know, uh, somebody who's pandering to some local you know, hate or divisiveness or, uh, uh, you know, and appealing to communities. He kept the issues hard. He didn't let the campaign drift. And his hold on the campaign right from day one till the end was very, very visible. And I would give him directly the credit because, you know, in an election, it is the candidate who really determines how he wants to fight that election. And he knew how to fight it. So that's a positive sign that where CPI was third earlier, that he has represented at yeah. least a significant fight and possibly winning that seat. Yeah. So, and if that happens, it would probably also be the change of some kind in Bihar politics because it he is, would have a national, but also also pan Bihar uh, presence. Absolutely, it will change a lot of things. Apart from your next Lok Sabha, it will change. It will be a, sort of an example and a demonstration of the counter narrative and how it can work and, and how it should work. And a very articulate yes. counter-narrative. Yes. Okay, coming back to other areas, Bhopal. You know, a lot of people are seeing the Bhopal Pragya Singh Thakur in some sense as a kind of aberration of the BJP. Okay, they shouldn't have done that. But what they're not representing that with Yogi Adityanath earlier, earlier and Pragya Singh Thakur, these are actually statements BJP is making. What is the direction they want to go? And this is not just putting up a candidate who is in the docks for Absolutely. terror charges. It's essentially a signal to both communities, the Hindu and the Muslim community, what's the way to go? It's the apologists for the BJP sitting in Delhi who are saying this, you know, who are making this argument. Uh, because they don't know otherwise how to sit in those liberal chairs and actually say they're supporting the BJP. Because when they say they're supporting the BJP, somebody comes up with, but what about Pragya Thakur? And then they say, well, you know, that's an aberration. They needed, you know, this kind of an argument. But the BJP leadership is not saying that. No. Modi has stood by her. Shah has stood by her. They have made it very clear that this is what their politics is. They have made it very clear through her to everybody that there is this thing of impunity, which works for all the people who want to violate the law, if they have to violate the law, whether it be a terror accused or a lynching accused. Um, as long as you support the BJP, everything is good for you. And also a larger message that Hindu violence is not terrorism. Yes. If a Hindu does it, it's somehow sanctified. I think but, it's, that's you know, been, uh, to be fair to Modi, to, he's always, been he's always said been that. Different. He's made, made that. I mean, when in the last election, when he gave that call from Assam that only the, you know, in migration, that everybody who is non-Muslim is welcome, uh, is basically the same argument. That, and you can also see it on this, so the Hindus cannot be violent argument now, which is going on. Now, of course, we forget about communal riots and forget about various other things. If you take the population of jails, of course, it's quite secular, shall we say. Yeah. Whole communities yeah. are there. And we have had also representation of all castes in Absolutely. jail. And they're there for violent crimes. So yeah. to say that 
crime, violence is old. Hindus are somehow sac you know, uh, not a part of that. Is flying in the face of reality. So it's like the white thing. I mean, if a white guy goes and picks up a gun and terrorizes an entire school and shoots dead about 50 people, he's a little poor fella. He's got a bad background. He had an abusive father. He's slightly mental. mental but at the same one soul... Muslim does it, he's a terrorist. So it's the same absolutely, absolutely. argument that's coming down here and it's playing itself out because this is a climate that was created by the uh, right wing uh, across the globe. And it's an argument that is, feeds into certain um, ideologies like the one we're seeing now. And interesting enough when they say they can't, Hindus cannot be a terrorist. Well, Gotse was a Hindu. Mm. And uh, are they also arguing that was not a terrorist violence? You know, yeah. if, if, which is well, what killed are. Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, there are a lot of people who worship Gotse. Yes. And they think that but he's But they won't a good say guy. it in public. Yeah. You know. yes. They will say it Yet. in public. The yes. BJP will not. Yeah. That is, that's exactly. a difference. There's always be that voice who will say it and then somebody will admonish that voice. So this election is also still a watermark in terms of the kind of campaigning, kind of messaging we are hearing. And this is not just about Modi winning or not winning the elections. The poison or the toxic nature of this campaign is going to also something we have to contest whichever way the election goes. See, in 2014, you had the BJP and Modi contesting the election on development, on Swaj Bharat, and Make in India, in all those kind of slogans which had to do with a certain kind of development um, package. And people came on that. Last five years and this election, they're contesting on communalism and the isolation of communities. Very clearly. I mean, they're not even saying Hiding. national security, the whole national security paradigm is connected with the local um, uh, uh, politics as well. If they get the mandate this time, then the mandate is for this. And this is much easier and very much part of the ideology to then pursue to its full health. That's you don't you even have to, have to pretend then for development because you didn't ask for the vote on development. You asked the vote for Guz Guz Ke Marege. To the evocative opinion. slogan, yes, which is which happened also, which is not just Pakistan, yeah, yeah. obviously. But there is a, ghus sakte ho, they mm. have the army, so that's the that's yeah. really the yeah. slogan. And again, of course, whichever way it goes, another five years of struggles for you and me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Seabat, for being with us. And we hope the voice of independent media, which we discussed also last time will continue to play its part because I think we are very much a part of the new mix that's yeah. gener being generated. This is all the time we have with News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and our, visit our website.